Give you the high praise. Be with us, God. Be with this service. Bless us. Touch the bereaved family, Father God. I got a loss in my family, but the Lord has been praying for you. Bless them. Strengthen them. Lead them to God. All these men are just to be at. In your precious name. In your son, you need to be praying. In your name, God, in your name. In your name, God, in your name.
and every tongue we will confess that Jesus is Lord. Let's look to the Lord for his blessing on our time of ministry, our preaching time, and the reading of the scripture. Precious and eternal Lord our God, who is still our Savior, we take but a few moments now, Lord, asking that you might bless this message, that you might bless these words, that they might go out and do exactly what you have called the word to do, which is to not come back void. So it's in the precious and matchless name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Our verse this morning is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her right early. The nations rage, the kingdoms totter. As he utters his voice, God utters um, his voice, the earth melts, the Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. And that is what I'd like to spend a few moments reminding us today is God is still our refuge. God is still our refuge. Now, I know I'm not the only one feeling a little overwhelmed in these last few months. Just so much going on. A lot going on in the world, a lot going on in our society, a lot going on in our communities, a lot going on around us as individuals, just so much going on. A lot to think about a lot to concern ourselves with, a lot to contemplate, a lot to pray about. And the question that I propose today is this, how do we process it all without feeling overwhelmingly like we want to give up? How do we digest it all and still make a difference? And that is what I've been thinking and praying about, is how do we deal with it all without losing our composure? How do we handle the pressure and the sorrow that engulfs all of us without collapsing? How do we stay healthy and stay positive and stay strong and and stay sane in the midst of this storm. You see, the temptation is to just throw up our hands, literally or symbolically, and just go through the motions. Go through the motions. When the Lord began to speak through this Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. And because of that reality, the psalmist says, we will not fear. And as I begin to think about this, I am reminded of how often the term refuge or the metaphor is used in the Bible. Psalm 18 and 30, 
this God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord proves true. God is a shield for all those who take refuge in the Lord. Psalm 31, 19. Oh, how abundant is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you and worked for those who take refuge in you. Psalm 34, 22. The Lord redeems the life of his servant. None of those who take refuge in the Lord will be condemned. Psalm 35, every word of God proves true. He is a shield to those who take refuge. Psalm 61, 4, let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. And so the word refuge is a repeated theme, and therefore it is an important subject for us to receive deep in our hearts. The biblical writers understood that there was safety nestled in the crevices of God's presence. And so today, we can't help but to ask, where can we go to find safety? This virus everywhere. The, the, the racism, the bigotry, everywhere. But we still have to maintain this hope that God provides a hedge of protection around God's people. Those are the verses that we are leaning on now. That God will shield from the dangers of this world, seen and unseen. And with everything else that is going on, those are the realities that I am not ready to give up. We was taught that at an early age, and we maintain that reality, even today, that God is our shelter. He is a shelter from the heavy storms of life. And not only is he our refuge, but the psalmist says, he's also our power and our strength. So when I don't feel like pressing on, we can find strength in the Lord. So when it's time to fight the good fight, our strength is in the Lord. When, when a thorn in my side feels like it's more than I can bear, His grace is sufficient. And so if you're listening to this message, and wherever you may be, you feel like the pressure of this world is getting the better of you, I encourage you to go to the rock. 2 Samuel 22, David says this, For you equip me with strength for the battle. You see, not only does God equip us with the spiritual gifts that are needed, but he strengthens us for the battle when the battle, and when it's time to do the spiritual battle that is required. And because he is our refuge and strength, the psalmist then says, we shall not fear. Let me say it again. If God be for us, who, what can be against us? God is our protection, our safety, our refuge, and he is also our strength. And, and periodically, we have to remind ourselves of this reality. And so that's how the psalm begins, but then when you look at how the psalm ends, he says, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know. You want to know that he is God? 
in the midst of this pandemic? You want to know that he is God in the midst of this financial crisis? All we have to do, according to this text, is to be still and know that he is God. This life of quarantine is no better time than the present to just be still. And it occurred to me that the reason so many people don't know God and the reason so many people don't grow toward maturity is because we're so busy. And that's the implication. The psalmist says, just be still and know. You see, the world we live in keeps us busy. But God says, the proof of my existence is found in a still disposition. God is saying, you know who the boss is if you could just be still and reflect on everything that is going on around you. God is saying, we can still see his power even in the midst of a pandemic if we could just be still. And my question is, how can I be still, Lord, when every now and then my skin crawls with anxiety? How can I be still when I feel like I'm surrounded by bad news one day, terrible news the next? You want me to be still, but I feel like the ship is sinking and the captain is steering the ship right at an iceberg. So we have to learn to resist the temptation to take matters into our own hand, be still, God has people behind the scene. Be still. Somebody is praying for you. Be still. God brought you this far not to leave you. Be still. God going to open a door no man can shut. Be still. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Be still. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Be still. I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. How can we be still during the times of trials and tribulations? And three things I want to point out very quickly. One is meditate upon his word. Meditate upon the word of God. He, God will keep him at perfect peace whose mind is stayed on the Lord. And how can we keep our minds stayed on the Lord? It's to meditate upon his word. And I just want to share that with you because that's where I am in my walk with the Lord. We can still find hope in the word of God. The Bible says heaven and earth may pass away, but this word will remain forever. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Number two, worshiping. God helps me to be still. It's, it's something about the worship of God that enables us to have a proper perspective. It's like that feeling you get when you leave the house of God on a Sunday with a new peace you didn't have when you woke up that morning. Worship transcends everything in this world. When I worship, I can be still because I understand that God is still on the throne. When I worship, I come to the realization that God is still calling the shots. No, regardless of what else is going on, I worship because I have received in my heart that God is still on the throne. When I worship, it occurs to me that the holy judge, the holy righteous one, is still on the throne and he is still sitting high 
but looking low. When I worship, I realize that heaven and earth is God's footstool. When I worship, I receive in my heart again that I'm just a creature and God is the creator. He is the potter and I'm nothing but the clay. Worship, a divine practice, it's a holy act. It's God's business. Something happens in worship supernaturally that um, humanity's lexicon is not deep enough to explain in worship in a mysterious way a sinful person is able to transcend the sinfulness of this world and enter into the presence of the Holy of Holies. Meditation, worship, prayer. Last but not least, it's prayer. I could be still. Meditation, worship, and prayer. Prayer helps me to slow everything down. It's a, it's a discipline. When I pray, I discipline myself to focus and look to the hills from which cometh my help. When I pray, that's us laying our concerns at the foot of Jesus Christ. The old folks used to say, just have a little talk with Jesus. So the psalmist says, therefore we will not fear. Though the earth might change. And that's what's happening now in this pandemic. The world has changed. America has changed. But God is that one constant that will never change. Why did the psalmist put this here? After speaking of the Lord as our refuge and our strength, we will not fear, then he offers this discussion concerning nature's behavior. He says the mountains might slip into the heart of the sea, the waters may roar and foam. You see that these are the things that we cannot control. Man could not control how the earth changes. We have nothing to do with how the mountains quake. And so these are the things that we cannot control. And so what the psalmist is saying is that I'm not going to panic about the things I can't control. I won't fear them. Why? Because God is our refuge from the things that we cannot control. And so, stop by to tell somebody, control the things you can control and for the things you cannot control, lean on the everlasting arms of the Lord. There are some things in life we can't control. We have to control the things that we can't control. And the things that we can't control, we give to the Lord. It's like that, that famous saying, God Grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So the things that we cannot change, we be still in the presence of the Lord with confidence knowing that God can do all things. Now being still, doesn't mean we, we retreat to the sidelines. You know, one of, one of my favorite mantras, and I might say it a little bit too much, is um, you're either making a difference or you're becoming different. Being still 
yet still impacted by the reality of living in the fallen world. Being still, yet internalizing the destruction in a spiritual way, pursuing the things that God has called us to do, even in this world. Being still means, though he slay me, yet I will trust the Lord. We don't have to take matters into our own hands. We are confident in God's ability to be our refuge. God is our strength and we shall not be afraid. We shall not lose composure. I believe that God is calling us to have this, this same mindset of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who was able to tell the king, my God is able to deliver us. But even if he doesn't, but even if he doesn't, that is a be still comment. Our God is able to deliver us. But even if he doesn't, the word promise us, promises us that this is not the final chapter to this story. God will have the last word. And we have to hold that dear into our hearts during this troubling time. With, with so much going on, it's, it's easy to feel like God is not aware or God is not involved. But when we meditate on our word and when we find that place of worship and when we enter into the Holy of Holies for prayer, we are then reminded that God is still our refuge. He is still that hedge of protection. And though we may see through the glass dimly, there will come a time when we will be with the Lord face to face. Until that time, we are still knowing that he is our Lord. Let's pray. Precious Senator to the Lord, our, our Heavenly Father. We take but a moment now, God, to pray. Maybe someone who is listening to this message is feeling so anxious and they don't know how to be still. Our prayer is that you might give us the strength. Give us the strength. The strength to be still. The strength that says without faith it is impossible to please God. So my faith is what we're going to utilize. Help us to utilize that faith so that we can be still. Knowing that you are still God. You are still the Alpha and the Omega. And regardless of what the enemy has in mind, the Bible says what the enemy meant for harm God turned it around and made it good. And we believe that you're going to turn this around. And until you do, help us to be still. It's in Jesus Christ's heavenly and precious name, and by his blood do we pray. God bless you.